good morning everybody here I am to produce sorry here I am to bring you another video film review and this week I went to go see the film greed um, it's a uh, it's not a particularly well-known film um, the uh, co-star sorry the the main star um, and the director is somewhat like well-known um, um, it's the latest film by uh, Michael Winterbomb, um, who's um, directed um, some good films like over the past uh, few years, like Twenty Four Hour Par um, and Party People, uh, The Look of Love, and the mini series The Trip. Um, I mention those because he uh, usually brings his uh, A-list number one person along to star in those films, and that is one Steve Coogan. Yes, that's right. This is the latest Michael Winterbottom Steve Coogan collaboration. Um, and I have to say, it 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 was a good film. I'm gonna say good rather than great because um, it. I would say it hasn't quite got. It wasn't quite on the mark as what I thought like it would. But don't don't get me wrong. It was a enjoyable two hours. I still had fun, and I still um, recommend people to watch it because that's what all these videos like are about. I watch the films. I recommend them to people, and hopefully. They then go see it. So um, uh, let's get let's get into basic the uh, plot of it. Um, like the title of the film is called Greed. Um, not so subtly and rather unashamedly, it is pretty much uh, not only a um, stab at uh, for one Philip Green. Um, it's also a stab um, at the retail and fashion industry. Um, so you got um, uh, Steve Coogan playing. Um, um, Rich, um, like playing a character called Richard McCready, uh, who's basically a a parody, self parody of of one Philip Green. Um, obviously, like they couldn't have just called him like Philip Green; it would be too obvious. But the fact that of um, you know, like it's named Greed, uh, and his nickname is Greedy McCready, which which is a good um, play on words. Um, basically, like is a disgraced of uh, um, fashion retail. Um, entrepreneurial mogul who's um being brought um towards a uh, court of uh, artificial to um basically like be read like the riot act um and it, and it's done over a uh, fair series of flashbacks so sort of it goes from the court um to the present day like where he's hosting a party um for his 60th birthday to uh, restore his uh, somewhat battered reputation um and the film focuses um on his young life um love for the rise um and somewhat the fall back to the year redemption um i'm like so luck i do i do like that narrative like the fact that it, it, it goes back and forth back and forth like some certain films do like and it's done like in a narrative um in a narrative way that makes it fresh and relevant um the cut the cast is uh, fantastic uh, you've got david mitchell um as is um, um when i was this ghost writer like for his biographer sorry not for for his biography um david david mitchell a fantastic actor all always always like up love for laugh like as it seems he he is pretty much playing um mainly like the same character like he usually plays like the uh down on the luck type um shtick guy but that works for him like because like he plays it so well like there's some actors like that play like that type so well and david mitchell is one of them um, like Isla Fisher as uh, Steve Coogan's uh, wife. Um, the the irony is that um, before Steve Coogan was approached to uh, play like the role of of um, not McCready, um, it was given to uh, Sasha Baron Cohen, um, and that would have been like of interest. And given that Isla Fisher is uh, Sasha Baron Cohen's wife, like so husband and wife in real life, husband and wife on screen perhaps, but. Um, the chemistry between um, Isla Fisher and uh, Steve Coogan like works like really well. Um, like you've got Stacey Solomy as uh, Steve Coogan's assistant. Um, Stacey Solomy, like you might know from um, stuff as um, uh, him and her Bad Education and Bridget Jones's Baby, fantastic young British actress. Um, it was Shirley Henderson, um, fantastic actress, um, who some people might know as uh, Moaning Myrtle like, from the uh, Harry Potter series, and also played. Um, um, Oliver Hardy's wife in in the um, in the Stan and Ollie, um, Steve Coogan and Shirley Henderson like have lots of collaborations uh, together. The really weird thing is that um, Shirley Henderson is playing Steve Coogan's mother. 
despite the fact that uh, Steve Coogan in real life is only one month older than her. So uh, I'm pretty sure that Michael Winterbottom like, is looking at that lot. So I say, oh, you know, like it's funny, like let's do that. But you, you, you are you are scratching like your head, like thinking, why, why, why is someone like who's younger than Steve Coogan playing his mother? But as as so is the thing, as so is. We don't take these things so seriously in real life. After all, this film itself is self-parody of one Philip Green anyway. So I think I think you sort of just take things with a pinch of salt. Um, like, so back to like, the plot. Yeah, so um, he arrives on the Greek island of Mykonos. He wants a big lavish party like, for his 60th birthday to restore his battered like, reputation. You know, like his sort of, um, you know, his like, reputation lies in tatters. Um, so what ensures is basically um um in the run up to uh, um like his party um you know he 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 loves the film uh gladiator he really wants to um have have a coliseum built um so um, like so that like they can like like show off sort of saying ah oh, gladiators and lions yes he even brings in a real lion to um participates in, the, like, in this farce there's something that goes on with the lion and uh, the McCready in this film of course I'm not going to spoil it because that's the whole point you go watch the film and you can see the interaction between uh, Steve Coogan and the lion um, and pretty much um, what this film does as well is like, like, I, like I mentioned like how it goes um, back and forth back and forth between um, like his life so it shows like the rise of his fashion um shops um the plummeting down um like it like his early school years um that's that's where like sort of um they don't spend too much on that like which is good like because you sort of want like the real like modern day what's going on now with um like, with him um and of course like whilst he's being um read the riot act in court that's where like they flashback like with these things like so, like so they're like cutaways like mainly um some entertaining some not so entertaining um the interesting thing about this film is it's it's presented as a comedy in the trailer the actual film itself is a lot more serious and dark um like so it it is perhaps more of, of a it's presented as a black comedy but present um, sorry, that's like presented as a black comedy in the trailer, but the actual film itself provides it more as a drama with comedic elements in. Um, towards the end, it basically um, like they have like some facts about how um, workers are in um, like a like place like Sri Lanka are exploited. Um, you know, um, celebrities make all this money wearing clothes that are. Um, made for tuppence by factory workers in Sri Lanka and stuff like that you know that's that's when it gets a bit too political well I say it gets a bit too political that that's when it gets political they want to sort of say you know change change like your retail habits or or think next time you, you put on your clothes like how much you know it costs you it 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 costs the workers for it so you make it like it does make you think but at the same time sort of they are being a bit um on the knuckle with it but let but let's not forget it's very important that they address a lot of these issues and and i got to commend like winter bottom not for, for um addressing a lot of these issues um but, but like at the same time you sort of like they're doing it a bit they're doing it a bit haphazardly but um you know like that when you watch this film, like you do leave the screen thinking, "Wow!" But of um, all that aside, uh, Steve Coogan steals the show. I don't think this film like, would have been as good as it is, like had it not like been um, Steve Coogan. Like Steve Coogan is a fantastic actor, like who really knows like how a lot to play the, these um, characters. The thing with Steve, the thing with Steve Coogan is he has created so many great characters throughout the years. You know, like lots of Alan Partridge, um, you know, lots of betrayal of uh, Stan Laurel, um, um, like this time, like the character of on that, um, like the characters he plays in the trip, or gen, um, you know, like Night Museum, or gen, or just generally playing himself. Uh, but now like, you can add uh, McCready to to that list of wonderful characters that Steve Coogan plays. Uh, you know, like he really is a magnificent actor. Um, he really, really like 
him I'd, I'd say like him and Peter Capaldi um, are masters of put downs I'd love to see Peter Capaldi and uh, Steve Coogan like in a film together I mean like many ways in one I sort of like a look at Peter Capaldi as a variation of Steve Coogan and likewise so them two like they play it so well together um, like their characters um, and there's lots of celebrity uh, cameos in this like, like, like the irony is like um, um, on this island he wants to have all these uh, celebrities come round and like for his party sort of saying yeah you know like I still you know like I've lost money but I've still got all like, my mates and that a lot of them can't make it so they have like video messages um, the only the only celebrity that makes it like to his party um, is a uh, first uh, is a uh, Stephen Fry um, and a little cut go away, like you see Keith Richards like arriving, um, or as he um, put it, a, a tramp that won the lottery. <laughs> um, but he has like video like messages like at the party from like so Colin Firth, uh, Ben Stiller, Chris Martin, um, you know, it, like it references like how many like celebrities like he'd like to have, but like this what it is. Um, special mention as well, like goes to uh, Asa Butterfield, like who uh, um, plays his son. Um, Asa Butterfield, um, an actor, like who's risen, risen, risen throughout the years. You know, like like ten years ago, like he was playing like the little boy in the boys, um, 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 like the boy in striped pajamas. He wasn't the boy in striped pajamas, like, but it was in like that film. Um, for the likes of Ender's Game to now starring in a Steve Coogan film. Um. He's still a young actor, still still on the rise, but stick but um Asa Butterfield, um commendations go a lot goes to him, lot free. Not not a big role, but by role enough that you can sort of say, yeah, this actor is still a lot of on the rise, so good for him. Um so why should you go see uh Greed? That's my next uh, thing. Um you should see it if you generally like um Steve Coogan uh being Steve Coogan pretty much. Um and if you like cutting satire, um, this is this is the film lot for you. Um, it's uh, filmed in uh, Mykonos. Um, they have like like magnificent um, settings and oh, like, like that's the other thing. Um, not only like is it a cutting satire on um, rich people in general, um, the fashion industry. It's also a little tiny bit cutting satire on reality TV. Um, Steve Coogan's daughter is a reality TV show. Uh, sorry, she's a reality TV show, a reality TV star, um, with her boyfriend, um, like who's on the show Made in Chelsea, um, as, as so I'm told, I don't watch that, um, and there, there, there's, um, like, reference, like, to our, like, sort of, everything, like, is ingrained in, ingrained in reality TV, which makes me think, from that, for Michael Wilbaum's next film, I'd like him to expand on that to sort of say, you know, like let's have a a, t a a film based on the ridiculousness of reality TV. Of course, I'm not one to judge. You know, like there are people out there like who love that sort of thing. I'm not so much like I've been to that, but each their own. But um, overall, um, watch that if you like cutting satire on 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 that sort of thing and just Steve Coogan in general. Um, please go watch this film as quick as you can because I don't think it's going to be in cinemas much longer. So, there you go. Uh, so, on to da -da -da -da, the verdict. Um, I am going to give this 3 out of 5. Um, it's been a long time since I've given the film um, less than a 4. I'll give this 3 out of 5 mainly because I enjoyed it. It was good. I just felt it could have been a little bit better. You know, um... I get all the like the cutaways and stuff like that. That's like that's fine. Um, like, but some sort of scenes were a bit like haphazard. Like for instance, uh, he, like, like we sort of say, like and he goes to court. Although sort of you, you sort of figured out what the outcome of that court thing was. You you never sort of told. You know, like does he have to pay money? Like they gotta take like his cars and stuff like that. They they never actually say it can't have been too bad if he can go to Mykonos and throw a lavish lavish party so you know but we never get to tell like we never find out but um you know i think as well sort of like the whole political side of things they added in added it in a bit haphazardly um it's one of those films that's not really sure what it wants to be you know can't can't decide if it wants to be more of a satirist comedy more of a drama type thing sort of like so when like winter bottom's a bit confused there but still, still good film. I do recommend it. 
I just have to say it's just not as good as I thought it would be, but I did enjoy it nonetheless, so that's why I'm going to give it 3 out of 5. So please go watch this film, um, get the to a cinema to go do it and watch it. Um, yep, yeah, like I'm not sure like, what I'm going to watch next, possibly Dark Waters or The Invisible Man. Uh, uh, sport for choice there but yeah um anyway um anybody wants to leave any comments please do so below don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you very much for watching and have a lovely day thank you very much guys bye bye